Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. What you're about to hear and see on this program may disturb you. Please keep an open mind, for you may find that the information disseminated on the Cosmic Connection different from anything in your past experience. The views and opinions on the Cosmic Connection are not necessarily those of the organization broadcasting this program. Neither are they the views of the government, which seeks to suppress the investigation of the subject of unidentified flying objects. These are not the opinions of hucksters and charlatans who co-opt the importance of this message by their vain attempts to rip off the public through fear and misinformation. The term which best describes this program is from the Latin, fiat lux, which means, let there be light. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Cosmic Connection, your UFO connection for the Pacific Northwest here on Channel 11. I'd like to thank the gentleman from Bad Karma supplying me the music for our opening feed there. They are from Portland. They are from Boring, Oregon. And I'd like to thank Soren and Bad Karma for supplying me the music to make this program possible and make it a little bit more enjoyable than using uh, canned music. Hey, our numbers are 667-7434. This is a live call-in talk show dealing with the UFO phenomenon. We are on the air every other Sunday. I'm a little bit winded now. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Running up and down the stairs just before program. We have Dennis here, my constant companion in the UFO field. Dennis, how are you, pal? Well, good, good. Glad you're here. I want to thank the callers who have called. KEX 1190 AM for making it possible to show the program or to air the program Dreamland will be airing. It's an Art Bell show done from KDWN Studios out of Las Vegas. This program will be airing February 27, 1994 from 7 to 10 p.m. every Sunday. Art Bell does a fine radio program out of Las Vegas the program Dreamland will be, the topic will be UFOs, unidentified flying objects, uh, probably ghosts and, and things of that matter. It's a very interesting show. We'd like to thank all you callers for calling KEX. I understand their lines were very busy during uh, the past two weeks. This program is a syndicated show called Dreamland and it has been picked up. There, it will be picked up. It will air, remember, again, February 27th, 1994, from 7 to 10 p.m., and this will be, until further notice, uh, from KEX Radio, 1190 a.m. Good job, y'all, the viewers of the Cosmic Connection. We got the job done. Very, very good. Yes, uh, we'd like to thank you out there. Our telephone numbers are 667-7434, live call and talk show today, February 13th. Also, I understand that the space shuttle was available to be seen by Portlanders uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in the morning from uh, 6.47, uh, various times in the morning. Uh, if anyone out there was up and saw the uh, advertisement in the newspaper about seeing the shuttle fly over our skies, uh, drop us a line, or, you know, give us a call and have us uh, tell us your experience on that one. Okay, now the UFOs at hand. We have a, a movie that's being made. I just was informed by Steven Spielberg. Dennis just told me Steven Spielberg is making a movie dealing with the Roswell incident, the crash. Due, out, due out in 1997. Due out in 1997. How about the, uh, the made-for-television movie that I understand is being produced now? Uh, it's in the can. Uh, Randall and Schmidt were behind the uh, scenes on that one and responsible for the content. And that'll be seen this summer on Showtime. Great. Dealing with the Roswell crash, as you know, ladies and gentlemen, we have had Kevin Randall and Don Schmidt on this program. We invite you to call if uh, we have any 
Are the lines filling up there, Mr. Producer? Pardon me? We have, two calls. we have two calls. Let's take a call right now. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Greetings. Hello? Hi. Hi, my name is Barbara. I was wondering if you've ever uh, listened to a tape called The Time Traveler. It's a tape where you can go under, under meditation and a guide takes you. And what ends up happening is the space shuttle will, or a spaceship of some type, will come get you, and you can time travel and go see things that some people don't believe. And it's been happening to me ever since I was a child. And when I found this tape, I can do it on my own now without having them come get me. I call them. Uh, are you talking about out-of-body experiences? Yes. I, I guess that's what you would call it. You go with your mind. Uh, where, how did you become available of this tape, and how long have you been doing this? And uh, has it been, I guess you say it's been successful. It's been very successful, yes. I've been to Mount Shasta. Um, I've been to the Sphinx. I've, I know now what's in the Sphinx. Um, at Mount Shasta, I know what's in Mount Shasta. And it's something that you have to experience for yourself. You can get on board the shuttle um, with colors and tones. You have to visualize the colors and visualize with your mind the sound, and then you can board. Um, how I came across this tape was a girlfriend of mine, Pauline. She had the tape. Right now the tape is in the trunk of my car, and I can't get to it. Sure. If, uh, this is an audio tape. Yes, it is, and it's called Time Traveler. Well, how, how, how can you verify that this, this works for you? I, do you go to sleep? Uh, uh, are you conscious when this is happening? And how do you know that you're not dreaming? How do I know I'm not dreaming? Sure. Be because it's too real. It's too real. Can, can you bring when back I get any physical evidence? Physical evidence? Yeah. I, I, sure, not, I mean, you, not physical. You'll have to do it. When I get the tape back, I'll give it to you, and, and you can go. I think he was asking if you physically try and go verify what you've experienced if you physically try and go there and and confirm what you've experienced if i had the money yes i would well what, what i'm what i'm saying what dennis is saying is you you've been there correct yeah all right let's let's talk about cairo you've been to the egyptian pyramids in cairo correct yes you you say you're doing this in your mind yes okay so you're you're not physically being transported there by some physical entity taking you to this place. This is all in, in your subconscious mind. They come and they, there's, there, there are guides and there's other people that go with you. And it's not just, it's not, oh boy, it's not just me that's going. There's other people that are there also and you can communicate with the other people. So that are they are seeing the same thing. So Barbara, would you call yourself an abductee, or you're willingly uh, going and, and you instigate uh, the uh, the beginning of this trip? Is that correct? When I first went, I was about five years old. They came to me out in a field when I was a small child. You had this tape when you were five years old? No. Okay. No. Um, it wasn't until last year that I got a hold of the tape, and now I can call them and go on my own, and I'm not afraid anymore. Because well, I, I used to know that, that, that UFOs were real and that something sure. happened to me as a child. But, you know, you can't tell people stuff like that because they think you're crazy. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've heard that a few times about, you know, just this program right here and uh, the, uh, the information that we discern over this broadcast. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to doubt you, Barbara. I just, uh, I've never heard of this um, format or, or what, what you call the... Uh, picking up a tape. If, if you'd like to send me some information, I'll be more than uh, happy to look into it and confer with Dennis here, and, and we'll have you call back, and we'll discuss it some more. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, keep up the good work. How about, how about Dreamland? Are you looking forward to that program? Um, this is only the second time I've watched your show. Well, you saw the very beginning where I spoke about Dreamland, a, a syndicated talk show that will be airing over KEX Radio. Um, on February 27th. I'll watch. You, 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 well, it, it will be on your radio. Okay. Every Sunday night from 7 to 10 p.m. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. I look forward to getting your letter. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Very interesting call. Yeah. Have you heard of this uh, <laughs> phenomenon? Uh, a, a tape, I guess, an audio tape.
Uh, I've heard of it. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, specific I don't know if one. it's. I should have asked her if it was like channeling. Um, yeah, pretty. Pretty. Well, maybe she'll write us and send us some information. Uh, I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Next car. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Your name, please. Uh, Steve. Hi, Steve. How can we help you? What would you like to add? Um, how can you be reassured that your cosmic experience is for real, and that it's not just a subconscious dream or? you know, another state of mind. That you're, you're talking about the previous caller? Yes, I sure. am. Sure. I, I believe I was trying to get to that. Uh, that you know, uh, it's hard to... Uh, when, when you have a dream, some people uh, can't... There are some individuals, I understand, cannot discern reality from, uh, right. from dreams and whatnot. So uh, we're just going to wait for the information to come through and uh, dissect it and see what's, what it's all about. You know, I've, I've been outside and I've seen weird lights in the sky and you're not sure if that's a cosmic experience or not or just a shuttle flying sure. by. Sure, But, I mean, is it not considered an experience until you've been abducted or, or what? Oh, no, we also have sightings where the, uh, the maneuvers of the lights that you're seeing uh, defy the physics of of uh, gravity and and motion etc that's when it crosses the border and and it's it's up to the individual watching to determine whether whether it's something that's iffy or if it's for sure unusual from other people's experiences do they experience different colors and lights or do they vary in the same color well, are you talking about what this woman was was discussing or are you talking about our personal uh, sightings from a personal sighting well, I, I can tell you right now, Steve, the, the sightings that I've seen uh, did have color. Uh, uh, the, the cobalt blue was very prevalent. The white corona halo that was around each of the nine objects that I saw, plus the acrobatic choreographed uh, uh, dancing maneuvers that I saw of these craft. Uh, yeah, there were colors involved, sure. Is there any in particular books I could find that better learn or read up on what I've experienced? Well, tell us what you have experienced. Well, I, I saw some lights going like horizontal, then diagonal, then straight up and down, and flashing. Classic and then, and then they, they'd pattern. split and then come back together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I saw. Have, oh. you, done any, have oh. you done any reading on the subject at all? No, no, I, I just ran across your show, um, and I was amazed. Uh, Steve, what, what I saw were nine individual objects flying in a uh, echelon arrowhead formation stop uh, directly ab above where uh, my friend and I were standing. They came together as one, exploded in a fireburst, came back together as one, became the form of a diamond shape and took off. Yeah. Back, back to his question on uh, reading material. Number one, the book you'll want to start off with is UFO Crash at Roswell by Randall and Schmidt. Number two is Above Top Secret by Timothy Good. Those are the first two books we always recommend. Other than that, if you'd uh, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope, we'll be glad to send you a recommended reading list. Yeah, absolutely. Steve, how about that, pal? That sounds great. Um, um, go ahead. Um, I have one more question. Sure. Are, are we to assume, or does anyone have any idea of whether these different different patterns and lights and stuff could be different kinds of continents of aliens or anything, you know, instead of, you know, Americas versus Russian or, you know, Marsh, Martians versus some other kind of cosmic force? Or would they all be from the same life form, you know what I mean? Well, from what we can see, there, there appears to be more than one type of alien uh, visiting the planet, so um, like another you could speculate whether they're all from the same place or not. It would, I would, uh, just flipping a coin, I would say probably not. They're from different places. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Hey, well, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, thanks for the call. Uh, go to your local library. Also, uh, like you said, uh, UFO Crash at Roswell, Above Top Secret, and Alien Contact by Timothy Good. Great, thanks a lot. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for calling the show and participating. Uh, do we have another caller there? Yes, we do. Next yeah. caller, please. Welcome yeah, to the Cosmic hi, Connection. Uh, What's Doug your name, please? Tigard? Are you there? Hi. Uh, yeah, this is Doug out of Tiger. And I just had a question kind of that pertained to what um, that lady was speaking about, about um, traveling through time, and maybe I misunderstood it. 
but how would you, what would be the effects on your body as far as aging and, 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 and that? That kind of sounds a little bit, you know, I'm not saying that it can't be done, but, you know, wouldn't there be some side effects to something like that? If a person, if that tape did become available to people, wouldn't that be kind of dangerous? Well, I honestly don't know. I've, I've never heard of this form of, of getting an audio cassette and being able to do the things that she described. Uh, it's the first I've ever heard of it, Doug. Yeah, it sounds a little bit, a little bit unusual. I mean, it'd be neat if, if it was really able to do that, but I'd be a little bit leery of just <laughs> trying something like that for the first time without, you know, some sort of professional guidance or something. But anyway, hey, you guys got a great show, and that's all I wanted to know. Where would I get, um, if I was to look, where would I get um, reading material on, on something like that? At, at your local library or some, one of the well-known bookstores in downtown Portland. Uh-huh. All right. Well, hey, it was really great talking to you. And, you and guys Doug, had a good show. Bye. All right. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Another caller uh, there, Mr. Producer. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Hi. Hello? Hi. Hello. Hi. This what? is Pete. Hi, Pete. I got a question for you. Is there any place where one can get information on how their drive systems work? Or is there anything that's compiled that one would look at? Sure is. First of all, uh, what you're going to want to do is send me a self-addressed stamped envelope or call me after the program. We take, we take uh, phone calls after the program at 667-7434. We can direct you to uh, various videos that we have dealing with this subject that I personally have. We make available to the public. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your mail has been overwhelming. I have been taking care of your orders. Uh, Pete, uh, the information that you request, if you'd like to see it on a videotape, uh, you may call me after the program or write me a self-addressed stamped envelope. Or you, if you'd like to read about it, I suggest you g check out the book Alien Contact by Timothy Good. It has a section in there with a, of a physicist by the name of Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar claims that he worked in 1989 at Area 51 S4, dealing with the back engineering, and he worked specifically on the propulsion systems of the nine alien craft housed at Groom Lake, Nevada. And he's put out a videotape detailing how these propulsion systems work, and uh, nobody's been able, been able to prove him wrong, and it fits right in with mainstream science. It's, it's pretty amazing and awesome technology, but uh, it is just technology. Great. I'll send you a letter. Real Thank good. you very much. Pete, or call us after the program. I'll do that. Thank you very much, Pete. Anything else? No, right offhand. Uh, I was listening to the gal on the tape, and I have been into the psychic end a little bit, and there is such a thing as what they call astro travel, and it does work. Uh, I, but I, I would be very careful unless you have somebody that knows a lot about it. You, you know, you know, Pete. You, you bring up the word astral travel and the, and the, the astral projection. I re recall reading a book uh, some 20 years ago in high school, dealing with uh, a book written called Journeys Out of the Body, written by Robert A. Monroe. Yeah. A very fascinating book dealing with uh, astral projection. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe what this man was was able to harness and to contain in himself, where he would go to sleep and put himself in some kind of a trance and he would describe uh, going to of all places heaven or visiting a friend across town uh, where, where the, the friend uh, he would he would relate stories where he would go visit people that he knew and and the gentleman w would be sitting there playing the piano and had a sweater on he'd wake up the next day and then call his friend and ask him what he was doing at three o'clock that afternoon and relate this the, this uh, this experience that he had is, is this what you were referring to yeah have you tried it, Pete? Yes, I have. Pardon me? Yes, I have. And, and, and how, how long have you been doing it? Would, would you care to elaborate on it, please, for us? Well, I'm not sure I know that much about it. I do know that it's a very interesting experience. I bet. Time does not seem to exist when you're in that state. Very good, Pete. Very okay. good. Uh, call us you. after the program or send us a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I guarantee... Uh, we have some information uh, covering the propulsion systems of the alien spacecraft craft that uh, I, I guarantee you will find uh, more, than, uh, more than a little uh, interesting. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pete. Yep. Another caller, please. Hi, welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Hello, We're Cosmo. live, 667-7434. Hi, welcome. This is Jay. Hi, Jay. 
How's everyone doing? Just fine, Jay. Been waiting for your call. What have you got for us today? Uh, I got just a couple things. I'm always pushing my favorite book, UFO and the Alien Presence, Six Viewpoints by Michael Lindemann. I think ranks up there with the books you suggest. Uh, I'll, I'll look this one up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this caller, Jay, calls quite frequently, has very, very interesting information. That uh, book is on the desk today, uh, The Six Viewpoints. That's the one by Michael Lindemann. That's the one sitting under our little flying saucer right there, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's the red cover? You're right. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to have to check that one out from you, Dennis. Yeah, that's I, a very good I'll, one. I'll check that one out. I'm reading A Casebook History of a UFO Investigator by Raymond Fowler. Right. Right now. It's one of the, uh, like, I think I'm on the 35th book now. Hey, Jay, Jay, continue, pal. Jay, I understand that, uh, co that Congress is still looking into Roswell. Right. I, I've heard the same thing. I've heard uh, that Spielberg is even talking about um, making the film on Roswell. This came out, I believe, two weeks ago in the London Times. And I'm, I'll, I'll try to get it. I've been meaning to get it, and I'll let you know next show. But this came out in the London Times that Spielberg plans, I believe, in 1996. 97. 97, okay. I'd like to give a uh, last... Uh, time I gave the C-SETI ad address, I'd like to give a UFO political uh, action address. This is people who want to write uh, and get some action through Congress. I'm talking about uh, Operation Right to Know. These are the people who uh, march in front of the White House every July the 5th. I what? remember. Hmm? Uh, Bruce McAbee and Ed, uh, I can't pronounce his last name. I can't, I can't pronounce it. He's sure. I know the gentleman you speak of. Go ahead. And it's Operation Right to Know, right. Box 2911. Box 2911, Operation Right to Know. That's in Hyattsville, H-Y-A-T-T-S-V-I-L-L-E, Maryland. Zip is 20784. And if people would uh, write to this address, they can become a UFO political activist. We need everyone to write and get involved to bring the facts public. Okay. And uh, that's about it this week. Oh, no, 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 Jay, we're not going to let you off that easy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, okay, uh, you've, you've covered the Spielberg. Recently, uh, the Dreamland. You, you, you know. Obviously, you've seen the beginning of this program. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Dreamland with Art Bell, airing on KEX 1190 AM. Uh, yes, I've called KEX. I told them that everyone watching the show will listen. Thank you. And support all their sponsors. So. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, you told them that the Cosmic Connection was responsible for the deluge of calls. Yes, I, I told to. I told the person uh, that got the show, and I gave him the big push. Told him. We're really happy he got it, so... Yeah, wait a minute, Jay, you actually spoke to a human being? Yes, it, it took me five tries. Pardon me? It took me five tries. Sure. <laughs> uh, I called twice and got a machine. I know other people that I've, I'm talking to spoke to the machine. Uh, I imagine the machine was quite full. Well, I talked to someone. He, um, he said he, he hopes the show's good, and I said, look, there's really a lot of people in this area that are really interested in listening, listening to something like that. I've heard about the show from elsewhere. I really think that uh, it's very uh, contemporary. I think they got some really good information. Absolutely. And uh, I think they cover a lot of bases. And uh, we need as much input as possible. I've heard a lot of good things about the show. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I believe it's two weeks from tonight. The same time as you, Cosmo, so I'll have to tape one and listen to another. No, no, because it, it'll be on at 7 o'clock. Ah. Uh, we, we, we run from 6 to 7, and uh, Art Bell will be on from 7 to 10 p.m. with the Dreamland broadcast. Okay. Sounds, Thank you, Jay. Sounds good. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much, pal. Yeah, Next caller. Anybody that's interested in, uh, in this show and enjoys it will definitely enjoy the Dreamland show. Uh, Art Bell does a lot of work, and he has a greater access to such media individuals than we do but we're getting there right we're getting there uh, especially with uh, your connections there dennis hi welcome to the cosmic connection welcome hi this is max ramirez from Tualatin high school 
Hi, Max. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I'm in a UFO activist group. You are? Yeah. We're Tell interested. us about it. Well, okay, it's a little group that we have, and we're interested about UFOs, because um, really the government hasn't proven UFOs to be real or not real. That's so right. We're just getting information on UFOs, and we're wondering what kind of information you could send us about it. What kind of information we could send you? Yeah, or provide us with. Well, we have, we have audio cassette tapes of... of I, I have interviews of, of the various gentlemen who are in the UFO field. I have countless hours of videotape that Dennis and I have compiled over our two separate years until we've met about here about four, four to six months ago. Dennis and I have hooked up, put this connection together. Uh, if you'd like to talk to us after the program at 667-7434, uh, we'd be uh, delighted to uh, get in touch with you. And the name of your group is? It's the Ryan Reddit Special. Excuse me? Hello, Max. I, I truly do believe that there are uh, UFOs because when you look at it, if you look at it, I find it hard to believe that all those stars out there and we're just one grain of sand in the universe that could possibly have people on it. I really do believe that's hard. So I do believe there's other life. Sure. And other planets. And, and the name of your group is? The Calculus Motivamo. <laughs> and, and you laughing. Why is that? Because he's having a rough day about the All-Star game. And to tell you the truth, that Dominique Wilkins should have won the MVP Specialist Award. That's for PDX Sports Line. Next call, please. Hi, welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Next caller, please. Hello. Uh, boy, in, in hi, what's your uh, name? Uh, name's Pierre. Pierre, hi, Pierre. Hi, I just stumbled on this while channel surfing, and I've had a fairly long-term uh, interest in UFOs. And I was wondering if maybe you guys have some information that... Uh, could add to some things that Bud Hopkins had said a little over a year ago when he was in town. He he related a story where uh, he said at the time that he was presently uh, interviewing and also working in terms of counseling with a number of people that had witnessed uh, aliens that were able to literally uh, suspend themselves above the ground and go through uh, solid walls and abduct sure. people through the solid walls. And he did, even alluded to the fact that one of the witnesses to this was a well-known uh, national political figure and uh, he said he wasn't at liberty to to really discuss the details at the lecture at the time but that more information would be coming out about this shortly and I've just never heard anything else about it since then. Yeah, uh, Bud Hopkins was here about a year ago. Anything to add on that, Dennis? I, I, I haven't heard from Bud Hopkins in quite a while uh, in, in any form. I saw that lecture uh, that particular case you're referring to has received a lot of publicity and the skeptics are trying hard to debunk it and have failed so far, but he has not released the name of the famous person uh, you're talking about or even the bodyguard uh, guarding that person, but that was a multiple witness abduction right in the middle of Manhattan. I'm, I'm sure that's the exact case that I'm talking about. I just was hoping that you guys had heard something uh, since I'd left heard about Hopkins, but the, the thing I would like to add, though, is, boy, it's just tremendous you guys are on TV. How long have you been on? Since uh, July 11th of uh, 93. Oh, boy, I'm surprised I've never caught you before. Well, I'll, you're on regularly Sundays, is that correct? We're on every other Sunday at 6 o'clock live on Channel 11. Okay, and, well, and I'll be the sure. repeats, the repeats air every other Tuesday at 5 p.m. on Channel 21 and every other Saturday night at 9 o'clock on Channel 21. Well, great. I'll be a regular listener, and I'll pass Thank the you, word. Thank you, Pierre. We'll be on next Sunday at 6 o'clock this time. Great. Okay, Pierre. Thank you. Next caller, please. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Hi. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Paul, is, is the earphone working today? I uh, haven't heard anything uh, today. That's all right. Yeah. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Hi. Next call, please. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me this one? We got you, pal. What's your name? Okay, this is Bryce. Bryce, how are you, friend? Good. How are you, Cosmic? Good. Good, good. Hey, you know, while I got you on the line, I was going to ask you, have, has anybody heard anything more about the uh, HBO special on Roswell, or did I just miss it? Showtime. Showtime. Uh, we, we just talked about it about uh, at the very beginning of the program. Did, okay. Uh, what would you like to know? Well, I just wondered... What am I repeating? 
any, when's it when's it going to be on? This summer. Oh, this summer. Showtime. Ballpark. It's just sometime this summer. Uh, the exact uh, show date hasn't been nailed <coughs> down, but the film is done and it's in the can. I believe August is when we'll see it. Great, great. Okay, I'll just watch for it. You know, I had a uh, experience that happened to me back in 1983 when I was driving up by five, and it was a daylight type experience. And uh, what it was was uh, I was driving up toward Wilsonville. In fact, it was right after the Wilsonville exit, middle of the day, probably one or two in the afternoon. And I caught out of the left side of my windshield kind of a, I don't know what you could say it was, it was like clouds kind of spinning. And I couldn't tell the height of it because it, what it was like, it was like uh, the size of a, a quarter or something that, that was hollow, and then there were clouds kind of spinning around it. And I looked at it. Is and that I right? Huh? You, you, you saw a wake? What, no. I, see, that's just it. it, so it what it looked like, if you could uh, imagine this, if you had a donut, and the donut, the solid part of the donut was clouds. Sure. Okay, and they were kind of like spinning off of something, if you can imagine that, like in a circular, kind of a spiral motion. An opposite but, vortex. Well, I, whatever it was. Sure. And, it, and in the center, it was hollow. It was just clear. Uh -huh. And I sat there, and I looked at it for a minute, and the funny thing was, it was so stationary. It was the thing that, you know, caught my eye. If, I thought if it was a cloud, uh, many times, you've, if you've ever been in the desert, you might have seen clouds forming, uh, and they just kind of uh, come together out of nothingness. But there's a lot of movement and rolling, and they move across the horizon. Well, this didn't move. This was stationary. And uh, there was no other clouds in the sky at the time. It was a clear blue summer day. And uh, I, I finally, as I got up past it and went out of my sight, I said, that's really strange. I've got to stop and take one more look. So I stopped, pulled off the road, got out of my car, and just sat there and looked at it for a minute. Uh -huh. And I watched it, and I watched it, and I watched it probably for three or four minutes, not, not even quite five. But it didn't move, and I thought, well, that's really strange. I don't know what that is. And drove off. And for about a year or two, I'd, I'd ask people, meteorologists, um, uh, different people that might know about it. Nobody seemed to know what it was or what it could be. Good for you, Bryce. At least you checked up on it, huh? Yeah, yeah. It was pretty interesting anyway. I just thought I related no, to it. No, no, that's, that's, that's fine. Uh, okay, somebody's going to get photographed. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it would have been nice to have one. No, no. <laughs> Uh, I believe uh, somebody is taking some pictures of the of the crew. Uh, Bryce, uh, you've been a, a great caller of the program. Uh, any uh, any any new information that that you might uh, have for us that you've uh, come across? Just a little local local sure. color like local to hear color. It. Pardon let, me? let me add some local color information. Please uh, on the uh, Mufon group that used to meet at Mount Hood Community College. Right. Um, I was talking to one of the security guys up there the other day on the phone asking when they were going to meet again, and he said maybe not for a while because there was a problem with a little rent situation. Now, okay. I don't know if they've gone and started meeting someplace else or uh, if they're trying to get that thing squared away, but um, that's what happened because I attended several meetings uh, up there, and right. then after the first of the year they just stopped. I don't know anything more about that. Uh, that group is on hold until further notice. Oh, okay. That's, that, that's really a shame. I, I attended uh, one of their programs weeks before we started doing this, this show right here. There must have been 150 to 200 people there. I've tried to contact the lady that's in charge of New Fog. Uh, haven't been able to, to quite make contact there. It was it was a pretty pretty good seminar that I, from what I've saw a lot of interest and Dennis they're having some management problems right now and uh, and some help problems uh, just getting enough help to sure. run the group so it's uh, going through some hard times well, and may or may not reappear I I, I can understand that uh, to to do this program we have a lot of volunteers uh, it's it, it's 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 pretty difficult to get it all in line to, well, get, to put this program out for you, for you, the ladies and gentlemen on the show. Uh, we do our best. I get sometimes we get a call that says you guys are just scratching uh, the surface of the UFO phenomenon, but I, I honestly think that that Dennis and I 
we're, we're trying to give a 100% for this program. Also sedating that that the, the, the information that we're giving out, this is like a kindergarten class, ladies and gentlemen. What we're trying to do is to make you aware of the UFO information. Bring it to us. We'll go through it. We can bring it out to back. If you call us, then we'll bring it out and let someone else know about the UFO problems, the cover-ups, and uh, the, the hardware, the nuts and bolts hardware, like we had uh, Dana Fox last week who spoke to us after he had regressed an abductee, uh, an alleged abductee that had called this program looking for help. We made that connection and it's working fine. And uh, for those of you out there who, who think we could do a better job, well, we're, we're doing the job that we think we should be doing right now. And um, the participation of the, of the cards and letters that we get from you people out there has just been fantastic and I'm happy. Yeah, I'd, I'd say the, uh, the people that say they're just scratching the surface are uh, the people who are pretty well educated and are a little bored with probably the, the UFO 101 approach that we yeah, take. But, that's right. But that's who this is for is for new people. Sure. We, we don't have time to cover in depth the, any of the subjects in depth. So we're just trying to make a connection and direct people to the information they want. The vast majority of mail, and I did want to mention this, I'd like Please. to thank all the people that have yes. written and that mail has made my day on more than one occasion. The support and good wishes that we get really mean a lot to us. Yeah. I see there, pal. Actually, as a caller, you know, you guys are just kind of like, uh, you know, the UFO phenomenon or enigma or whatever you want to call it itself because you're helping by adding just little pieces of information that you guys pick up. And sure. I think uh, those of us who listen to you on a regular basis really appreciate that. Anyway, thank you. Uh, Bryce, see you next time. Bryce, Bryce hang on. before you go, yeah. uh, you, since you brought up the subject uh, of not having any place to go once a month anymore and uh, see some meetings, I'll go ahead and spring a little advance news. Uh, a, a group known as Friday Night Videos is going to be making an appearance here soon, and once a month people will have a place to go and watch UFO videos, and it may be uh, centrally located in Portland. We're not sure on the location yet, but uh, that's why I haven't mentioned it because it's not finalized, but I hope to by the next uh, broadcast to give you definite times and locations on where that's going to be. Oh man, that's great. I know I'll, I'll be looking forward to it. Absolutely. Great. Thanks again. See you later. Bryce, thanks. thanks for participating. Thank you for being a member of the Cosmic Connection. Thank you, pal. Next caller, please. Thank you for holding, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get to your calls. Hi, welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Yeah, hi. Uh, connector? Yes. Yeah, hi. My name is Mark. Just hi, Mark. Hi. How you doing? Great show. Thank you. Anyway, just wanted to bring to your attention the uh, March 94 edition of, of all things, Popular Science, and it's got a cover page story of Secret Air Base, and they're talking about uh, Area 51, uh, Groom Lake, and they've got like about a five, six page spread with photos and Color photos. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a neat article. It's kind of scary when they show the warning uh, restricted area stuff, and on the bottom of that warning sign, I guess they have it all down the road there. It's uh, use of deadly force authorized. Can so we get a shot of this camera? Those forward? guys mean business. <laughs> yeah, you bet they mean business. The uh, picture that we're getting a shot of right now is one of those warning signs, and it basically implies if you even dream or think about this area, they'll come and arrest you. It's a pretty serious warning. Yeah, I've just kind of scanned through the article. It's really interesting. It's got a, a Russian satellite photo of the place and a couple other uh, satellite photos. It's got some other uh, information about other people who go out there to watch uh, U.S. military aircraft. So it's not just UFO guys who go out there to watch, but... Uh, oh, absolutely. It, it's an interesting uh, Mark, article. Mark, was that the photo that, that you were uh, talking about? Well, I'm looking out. I'm looking at the TV. I can't quite see it. Uh, can we get a shot of that camera for? This thing says... This if thing says in big, uh, popular science. Is that correct? From March? Yeah, popular science, uh, March 1994, and uh, it's it's uh, uh, going right with what you guys say. They kind of well, underplay. How about that photo right there, Mark? That that's, that looks real familiar. Yep, that's the one. Okay. Yeah, these guys, <laughs> and, and one of the guys who go out there, I guess, and they kind of try to not break into the area, but certainly get close. 
uh, they talk about uh, uh, beige uniform guys trailing them and uh, other setup sites where uh, observers have tried to set up and watch the base. They come out at night, and it sounds like they machine gun those sites, but I'm not sure if that's what the article is saying. Uh, it also talks a lot about the government wanting to take that 4,000 acres of uh, mountain site sure. and uh, completely you know, restrict that whole area. So well, it's that an interesting has been article. Approved. That takeover of the Whitesides Mountain Range has been approved mm -hmm. and isn't supposed to take effect to, for two years, but nonetheless... Uh, it's just as good as in effect, uh, even before this went into effect. Anybody that took binoculars, mm. cameras of any type up the Whitesides Mountain Range had it confiscated. The only way they'd leave you alone is if you went up with no equipment, they'd let you walk up and look down in there. Mm, boy. Mark, have you been to Area 51? I have not, but I'll tell you, I halfway planned a trip there. Sure. And uh, reading this article and also just kind of understanding that when the government gets serious, they get real serious. I get kind of spooked about going out there. Well, that's, well, that's, that's, that's the whole, that is the whole point of part of these articles that are coming out now. They, want, they don't want you to go out there because of programs like this, the Billy Goodman Happening, of which I was associated with in 1989 in Las Vegas. Well, the, your, your George Knapp specials, your, yeah. your sightings, all have been talking about this mailbox road, Area 51. I've been out there personally five or six times. Dennis has been out there. Oh, God, I'd love to get out there. You can, you Before can, you go, yeah. well, they have, to oh, us, we have an Area 1... Fifth, Area 51 viewers guide that'll show you exactly where you can and cannot Yeah, go. I've been meaning to send you guys a letter to uh, find out how to get a hold of that. You can call us after the program and we'll, we'll, we'll give you information on that. Great. Also the videotape that goes with uh, it. You know, they also have a picture of the black mailbox. They talk about Sean, uh, Sean Morton. Morton and Lazar. And, right. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a scientific, it's a popular science article, but it, it kind of applies to what the uh, we're all talking about here. So. Well, I guarantee you, we're gonna get we're gonna get a hold of that, and uh, we'll pick that one apart also. Great. If I'll send you a, a mimeograph or whatever in the mail. That'd be fine. That'd be fine, Mark. Anyway. Give us, Mark, give us a call after the program. If I can do that, I sure will. Sure, thanks, Mark. Thanks for the show. Thank you. Welcome. You're Bye -bye. welcome. Uh, I'd like to thank my crew on and behalf of the crew here. And don't forget, Mark, to watch to listen to the uh, Air Dreamland program on 1190KEX. Starting February 27th from 7 to 10 p.m. Hi, that, next caller, please. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Go ahead, Dennis. Was that every night or every that, Sunday That's going to be every Sunday night. Gotcha. Hi, welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Welcome. Seeing that movie, Fire in the Sky. All right, next caller, please. Hi, welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Hello? Hi. Have you seen the movie Fire in the Sky? Uh, yes, I have. What's your name? Uh, Sean. Okay, Sean. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Okay, pal? Yeah, all right. Next caller, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had dealings with this person. He likes to uh, have fun here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure his parents would be really impressed with uh, if we had caller ID. But we don't have caller ID, ladies and gentlemen. That's, we're not going to get into that. Uh, because uh, we don't want somebody not calling for fear that we're going to call them back or, or give them. So that's why caller ID has not been implemented on this program. So there's no need to worry about caller ID on this program. Hi, welcome to the Caller Cosmic Connection. Hi, how you doing? Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Okon Essiet. Uh, that's O-K-O-N. And I just ca caught your uh, program, actually. And what your name is Okon? Yes. Okay, hi, Okon. Hi. Welcome. How are you doing? Great. I just want to find out how much does the government know about UFOs, the UFO phenomena, and why is it being covered up? Because I missed most of your program. I don't know if you went through this earlier. No, no, it's, it's fine. Uh, we, we've done about 14 shows. It's our 14th show since July 11th. Uh, what does the government know? The government knows, one, that there are alien beings, two, that there are hardware of technology far advanced than ours, uh, three, uh, possibly that there is uh, an alien genetic experimentation going on with uh, human beings, uh, and it just goes on from there. That uh, there's uh, there are there are avail avail abilities to uh, what is it? Uh, Star Trek thing. Materialize or dematerialize? Demater yeah, to materialize and dematerialize, as was uh, spoken uh, about in an article that I read dealing with the Eisenhower meeting 
out at Edwards Air Force Base in 1952. Well, we went over that a long time ago. Yeah. It's just the government knows a lot more than we do because they have better sources and better information. Why is it being covered up? Well, there are several reasons. Uh, number one, just the technology, the military aspect. Uh, look at how seriously they guard just their atomic secrets. Well, it turns out the propulsion systems to these things contain materials that make atomic secrets look like firecrackers. So there's the military potential. Number two, worries about a stock market crash is very real because a lot of technology would be immediately rendered worthless. Nobody's going to invest in today's technology if something else is online. Um, Panic is also another factor. I mean, I experience this personally just talking to people, uh, a lot of people that aren't aware of UFOs, become frightened and angry in discussing it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Hey, Okan. Yes. Thank you for watching our program. Thanks for calling. Thank you for calling and participating. Okay. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, pal. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. We invite you to write us letters at Post Office Box. 86 186 Portland, Oregon 97286. We would like you to send a self addressed stamped envelope, preferably two self addressed stamped envelopes with two stamps on each envelope. Ask us for the particular subjects or subjects, subject or subjects that you are interested in, and we will send you the information that you request to the best of our ability. We've, I've Pro approximately we've received probably 200 letters since the beginning of the program. The, the letters have all been positive, fantastic articles that, that you send us, and we really do appreciate the, the mail and the input that, that you, the listener and the viewer, give us. Hi, welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Welcome. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Mark. Hi, Mark. Uh, listen, uh... I want to tell you about something that happened to my wife and I. Please do. Uh, it was in between uh, Oregon City and Canby. All right. Okay. What we time had, of year? Uh, it was in the winter. And what year? Uh, 1980. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we had been working in Portland that day, and we lived out between Oregon City and, uh, and Canby. And we were driving home, and the traffic had been pretty heavy because there was a snowstorm. Everybody got off work early, though. But as we were driving on the, sh on the road that we lived on, uh, it's like all of a sudden my vehicle just stopped, and over to the left of us there was like a big pasture, and sitting in the pasture was this really huge kind of oval, and it was kind of a yellow-white in color. Right. Uh, and I don't, I really couldn't tell you for sure how long we looked at it, but next thing I knew, we was sitting in front of our house, <laughs> and uh, we both, we didn't say a word. We, we grabbed the kids, went into the house, and she went in the bedroom, and I went in the uh, dining room, and we didn't say nothing to each other about this. We both drew pictures, and they looked the same. So I know we saw something out there, and we went the next day, and there was no... You know, no evidence of anything. Did but I there was something right out there, and it was like, time? it looked maybe 40, 50 feet tall, but suspended off, of, looked like columns of light. From the time that you saw the object to the time that you got home, did you experience some missing time? Yeah, well, it's like we didn't even realize that, that I, I don't have any recollection of starting the vehicle back up. I don't have any recollection of turning it off. Just all of a sudden, we were sitting there looking at this, and then it just, I couldn't tell you how much time, just all of a sudden, we were sitting in our driveway getting out of the truck. Well, you may not be aware of it, but that's a very common story. After someone sees a UFO, the next thing they know, they're home or in bed or whatever, so you're not alone. This is a pretty uh, usual type of happening, if you can call seeing a UFO a usual happening. Uh, and, and Mark, on, on the last program, Anna called with a, a sighting that pretty much uh, in, the, in the same vicinity as yours. I'm going to re, uh, reevaluate the tape and see what Anna had to say about a sighting uh, near the Canby area. 
And that's why I had you uh, say the date. It was 1980. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens on that one, all right? All right. Sounds that's what good. this program's about. You call in with your preferably local experiences, and uh, we'll see if uh, someone out there saw the same thing you did. Well, that's, I keep up the good work. I mean, I, your show is very interesting. Thank you, Mark. And I never really uh, told anybody about this before, and I just sure. thought this would be a good time to do that. <laughs> we sure appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we do, Mark. What I thought was pretty interesting about it is I know my wife and I didn't discuss it, and we both drew the same picture at the same time in different rooms, and it looked pretty much almost identical drawings. So I know we both saw the same thing. Uh, the story's been told before, Mark, not, not <laughs> the, the missing time part, I mean. We need, we need people to stand up and tell their story. We sure. appreciate you calling in. Oh, hey, thanks for listening. And to me. thank you for waiting, Mark. Oh, sure. Live long and prosper. <laughs> All right, bye, pal. Next caller, please. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Hello. Hi. Hi, this is Jay, Jay from uh, Portland. Hi, Jay. And I was wondering about the, well, I was sent away from MUFON Journal. And uh, I was wondering about the Ed Walter double exposures. Yeah, right. Uh, do you know anything about that? Uh, Jay, are you saying that you sent away to us? No, for the MUFON, but I sent it right to you, too. Uh, well, you're talking about the Ed Walters uh, MUFON journal? Yeah, well, it wasn't in there, but it's, they, sent, they had a list of material. They had something about the Ed Walters double exposures, and I just got finished reading his book. Okay. And uh, the Montel Williams the show. Yeah, I've back. been hearing about this Montel Williams show. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, they had a guy named Sean Morton on it. Right. You mentioned him earlier. And uh, about Area 51. Right. I was just wondering if you saw anything about that. Uh, well, yeah, I've got a video that uh, Sean Morton shot allegedly. Well, not allegedly. It was out at Area 51. But th the thing that he's got on film and that I've got on film is possibly the Aurora plane landing at, on the seven-mile runway strip out at Area 51. It's tough to say what it is it's landing because it's a ball of red light. We don't know exactly what it is it's landing. And it pulses. Yeah. I did see that Montel Williams show, and he promised to go down during the Christmas, this last Christmas season with Sean Morton and take a look for lights, and he'd report back to his audience. And as far as I know, he hasn't mentioned a word about it since. Yeah, I still wait for that, too. Yeah. Uh, well, if you do hear him ever say anything about it, be sure and call and let us know. Okay. Do you have our address, Ma uh, Jay? Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Thank you. Please write to us. Yeah, how would I get information? Just about anything? What, whatever you, there is that you'd like to know about the, the crop circles, the faces on Mars, and we can uh, Xerox some copies out to you or make you uh, uh, knowledgeable about our uh, videotapes and audio cassettes. Okay. Whatever area you're interested in, just let us know, and we'll direct you towards the information that you're looking for. Or we could send you a, a list of, uh, of knowledgeable books to read on. Yeah, I've read that book, Alien Contact. Yeah, excellent. And, uh, Above Top Secret. Yeah. Really You've read game. both of those? Yeah. Outstanding, Jay. Uh, thanks for, uh, I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you very much, Jay. Thank you for calling. Next caller, please. Welcome to the Cosmic Connection. Hi. Your name, please. Uh, Alan. Hi, Alan. Uh, I don't know, in that time I've seen probably four sightings, and it's like spears of light. One time it was like a, a ball rotating with uh, different colored flashing lights coming off of it. Any, any local sightings? Uh, like local in East County. Well, that's local enough. Uh, uh, tell us about it. We're right in the same area. Yeah, give us uh, the date and the time. Uh, it's probably in 72 and in 76. And please describe one of them for us, please. Uh, one was a spirit light <clears throat> that uh, looked like a big street light up in the air about, I don't know, 60, 70 feet. It, it's hard to tell because we walked toward it and you couldn't really get cl any closer to it. Uh -huh. Also, I wanted to get into a place I ran into as a chapel that was called, I don't really want to tell the name, but it was up by Mount Hood, and uh, they believed in laying the hands and the Christians and Hessians and the Dead Sea Scrolls and all that, and like tilt to the earth and the dematerializing and uh, materializing like clouds when UFOs come in and out. Okay. And they had the place called Big Rock, Florida, 
that they rejuvenize themselves to uh, go on interplanetary travel. I don't know. I've been into it for a long time. Well, like like a vortex zone? Did they, anybody think anybody call it a vortex zone? Uh, no, I never heard that okay. story. Hey, Alan, we're going to take off while the show's over. Okay. Alan, I want to thank you for calling. I want to thank you all for holding. I like and your thank show. everybody for getting. Yeah, what's that, Alan? So I like your show. Thank you very much, and and I want to thank you for holding. And Alan, I'm sorry I got to rush you out of here, pal. I was just going to have, thank everybody for getting that Dreamland show on the air for us. Good job. Yeah, folks. We, we really do. Uh, thank you very much for calling KEX 1190 AM and uh, putting a bug in their ear on this uh, Dreamland. And if you happen to call our bell, uh, just drop a note. Uh, drop a a uh, thing in his ear saying, uh, you know, the Cosmic Connection uh, is advertising uh, his his program, and it, it's our pleasure to. Uh, I want to thank Bad Karma. I want to thank Soren. I want to thank Billy Goodman. I want to thank all your cards and letters. We answer every card and letter that we get absolutely personally. If you'd like to address a letter to myself, the Cosmic Connector, or to Dennis, we'll uh, gladly answer them, send you the information that you're looking for. We will take calls after the show at 667-7434. We'll answer the calls uh, 30 to 40 minutes after the program. A reminder, the Boy Scout Troop, my charity, Boy Scout Troop 542 from Gresham, starting March 14th, will be doing their annual fundraiser. The Boy Scouts will be walking, coming to your homes, selling, uh, well, I guess we're not supposed to sell on this, on this program, but I think it's a good cause. If I get written up, so be it. Uh, they will be advertising their Cadbury roasted almonds, uh, their candies, and whatnot. So that's a Boy Scout Troop 542 from Gresham. Billy Goodman, ladies and gentlemen, till two weeks from tonight. Thank you very much. Look at me, can you hear my call? I'll take you away from here.